Welcome to all of you on the channel Maths with Munir. So today we are here to solve another problem from D2 Maths New Syllabus Mathematics 7th edition and we are taking this question from chapter number 1. So if you have watched my previous video then I am positive that you should you do have some concept of direct proportion so because this question belongs to the direct proportion null topic. So I am going to read this question quickly. If Q is directly proportional to P minus 1 and square P minus 1 P minus 1 square and Q is equals to 20 when P equals to 3, find the values of P when Q is equals to 80. You should have, please, please, you should have your copy and pen with you and note down every single step so that you can get this question very easily. Alright, so without wasting any single moment, we are going to begin with this question. If Q is directly proportional to P minus 1 square and we have learned that in previous video this is the symbol of directly proportional sign like the question says P minus 1 square and once we remove this directly proportional sign you must need to introduce equals to and K equals K P minus 1 square and it says and q equals to 20 when p is equals to 3 q is equals to 20 when p is 3 so you need to plug in these two value so we are going to simplify this step in order to get the value of k 3 minus 1 2 20 2 square is 4 now 20 over 4 is going to give you 5 so we have to get the value of k and we just got it which is k equals to 5. So we have to put this value of k back in this equation and we will see what we are getting q is equals to 5 into p minus 1 squared. Now we are going to the second part of this question. This part says find the values of p when q is equals to 80 find the values of P when Q is 80. So we have to plug in this value over here. Q is 80. So you will write 80 over here. 5 will remain the same. P we don't know. So that's why it's like this. Okay, so from here we know that we need to find out the value of P and this is the only variable over here which means that we need to separate this. So we are going to shift this 5 from this side of the equation to the other side and 80 over 5, 80 divided by 5 is going to give you um, 16. P minus 1 square. So it would be much better if I write this step like this. P minus 1 whole square equals to 16. So we need to find out the value of P over here and we know that there is a square on this bracket. We need to get rid of this square in order to get the value of P. So there is only one possibility that from which you can remove this square by taking the square root on both sides of the equation. Why we are taking the square root? Because square root and square these two are opposite to each other alright. So once you have square and you take down the square root on both sides they will cancel each other. P minus 1 square and this is square root. Please don't forget that in mathematics you always need to maintain the balance on both sides of the equation. Whatever operation you do on one side of the equation, you have to do on the other side. I have seen often student taking the square root on one side of the equation and the other side they are just neglecting. You can't neglect this, it's mathematics and you need to maintain the balance. So since this square and this square root they are opposite, so they are going to cancel each other. So P minus 1 is going to give you square root of 16. We know that square root of 16 can be written as 4 square. And once you will remove this, it will you will get plus minus 4. Now you might be wondering that why we are writing plus minus 4 over here, why we are getting the two values over here. We know that we know that 4 square is going to give you 16. 4 square, how is going to give you 16? Because 4 times 4. Whatever number you have over here, you need to multiply there. 4 square means that you need to multiply 4 2 times, 4 times 4 is equal to 16 
and if you have minus 4 square over here then minus 4 multiplied by minus 4 is also going to give you 16 so we are not sure yet that this 16 is being made up of plus 4 square or minus 4 so we, we are not sure that's why once we remove this square root sign we have to write plus minus both the value we have we have seen often problem where we are finding down the length and distance or radius or diameter or any other geometrical shape where the parameter we know that the length the radius diameter these things can never be negative so these are the obvious situation if somewhere you have to take the square root of the radius then you must need to write a positive sign you can't write negative over here radius can never be negative so as the length so as the diameter but over here we know that p is just a variable p is just a variable so that's why we are allowed to write the negative sign over here so you can't neglect this and if you look at this question and if you if you read this question you will realize that that's why they have mentioned values they do not they haven't write find the value they said values there is s over there it means that you are going to get more than one value in this question so p minus 1 is equals to 4 comma p minus 1 equals to minus 4 since we have the two values of plus minus 4 so we need to write this so you can solve this equation you will get 5 from here and this minus will go over there minus 4 plus 1 is going to give you minus 3 so these are the two values possible values for p so if you got this question please subscribe and share with as many as students you can it might help many